Toshokone 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 Ya hey ya hey ya na hey Ya hey ya hey Hi everybody, Tim Corcoran here again. Uh, I'm always blown away that anybody, even one of you, would watch this YouTube site. It really makes me, I mean, tear up almost with happiness to be able to share this work. And I want you to know how much it means to me because I love our planet with all my heart and I love everything about our planet, all the living beings. And to be able to share my love in this way and, and help to inspire people to protect and care for our planet. If she's in so much trouble now, uh, it's, it's just an absolute honor and I thank you for listening. I don't take it lightly at all. Um, and I wish all of you the best in your endeavors to care for our Earth. Good luck. Um, I wanted to introduce to you, I, I've... I've been writing now for a number of years what's going to be a definitive book in my life. I have a book out now called Growing Up with a Soul Full of Nature. And that book I wrote uh, a number of years ago, maybe about 10. And it's, it's about my childhood being raised by nature and being raised by serious mentors, adult mentors as a kid from the time I was basically born to about uh, the beginning of my adulthood once I got out of high school. And I wrote that book initially uh, and self-published it. You can find it uh, if you would like by, by contacting Headwaters Outdoor School. Um, I, I, I wrote that book, Cooper Go, Cooper Go. That's my dog. She wants, wants attention right now. Um, I wrote that book uh, with the intention of having it as a help for the students in my outdoor school, a continuing education piece for them. And I think it's bigger than that now. I, I think it's important that more people read it. So I, I wanted to just to put it out there. I, all the money that from that book goes to our foundation called the Walker Hub Fund, which funds kids who need help coming through our school and uh, I think it's the timing is right now people need to read that book um, particularly as we have so many children today that are being born or have been born that are three four five up to their teens into their 20s that are going to grow up in this world where there's so much craziness around our planet where, the, where global warming is going to set in where so many species of animals are about to disappear, where insects are disappearing, you know, where plastic is polluting our ocean, where oil is... You, you, you get my drift? These kids need every little bit of help and inspiration they can get in order to move forward in their lives. And so I wanted to put that out there. And that's the lead-in to... Uh, I'm writing the definitive book of my life. I'm 65 years old. I don't know what else I'm going to do after this as far as writing goes. Um, called The Earth Caretaker Way. And it's about, and I mentioned this a lot in the talks, it's about becoming an Earth Caretaker, claiming our birthright as citizens of this planet to actually dedicate our lives to caring for the planet. And this book is about that. It's about that. And it, I, I, I have big dreams for this book, folks. <laughs> you know, Part of my medicine, you know, we've talked a lot about medicine, people's medicine that, that they get through nature. Um, part of the medicine I have, that I am is that I am a dreamer. But I am a dreamer who's been able to manifest many dreams into reality. So when I get a dream, whether and I don't mean a dream so much that comes when I'm sleeping, but I dream ideas. And I, I manifested this school back in, you know, as you might have heard in another talk, Back in 1990, I got this land. I uh, met the Earth Keeper, who I've talked about. Um, it's 30 years, I can't believe it, 30 years. And I envisioned the school. And slowly but surely, maybe not even slowly, built 
built this school into what it is today, which is a remarkable place. I sit here right now in our sweat lodge area, which is a ceremonial area, and it's just absolutely stunningly beautiful. And so many lives have been transformed here in this place, this spot here. The creek behind me, you can probably hear it a little bit. And how are they transformed? If you ask me that question, I'd have to say very simply, it, people have awakened to their deeper sense of connection to the earth. They built a personal relationship with the earth from being here. And now they're out actually working, dedicating their lives to caring for the planet. That's what I want to happen. Now, I want this book. My dream is that it will inspire people to own our birthright, to be earth caretakers. And I want to see, my dream is to see groups of people in every city around the world start groups, earth caretaker groups, and go out and work in politics to change the way things are so that we vote for the earth, and to restore rivers and creeks and help animals and educate people and do whatever it takes to bring our earth back to health and thus us in our lives. And I hope that just billions of people do this. I Billions. Why you think small? This is not a time to think small. This is a time to think big. So I'm hoping this book will be out in about six months, give or take. Look for it. And hopefully it'll inspire you to go forth and change the world forever. So the next generations are the ones fighting for the earth, caring for the earth. And then the next ones after that, just maintaining, gardening, loving, and enjoying the earth. And all the crazies out there who are, appear to be running the world now will fall by the wayside and disappear. And good people with kindness in their heart and commitment and compassion and care and purpose and meaningfulness in their lives will be the ones showing us the way. I have to believe this, folks, because the alternative is not something that I want to I want to deal with. I want to believe. It's just it's no good. Okay, so I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to read some of the chapters I've got uh, of the book, and see what you think. Okay, so here we go. First chapter: Be an Earth Caretaker. Well, we know what that's all about now, right? And we're going to continually talk about that through every gym talk. Awaken your senses, chapter two. Bring your five senses alive by engaging them in nature. And of course, our sixth sense, which is our spiritual, our intuitive side, our inner vision, we often call it in the earth ways, that takes us to the spiritual side of nature. Um, number three, be curious and play. We get so serious we forget that the greatest teacher for us is often children. Curious and play. That leads us onto paths that we would have never gone in places we would have never thought of going. And then inspiration takes over. Four, open your heart. Our heart, our beating heart, the container of love, the thing that when love is dispersed through our heart makes us the greatest person we could be, is the greatest connector to our planet. Our heart, my heart, your heart, earth heart, one heart. Vital. Four, five, I mean, communicate with nature. Whether you're talking to nature, whether you're listening to nature, whether you're letting nature in on your intuitive intervision side, whether you're just opening your senses and absorbing all the wonder and the beauty and the magnificence of nature. Nature communication is vital because it builds, not only because it's a joy, it builds our personality and our personality as it connects to nature and it builds our relationship with nature so that we have, we have to act right. We have to protect nature because she becomes our friend, our partner. Six, build human-animal relationships. Nothing more powerful than observing animals in nature 
and connecting with them on different levels of our being, heart, our brain, our body. Just quick, today I was out on our back meadow and it's now blossomed and the flowers are finished and I, the grass is really tall and there were literally thousands and thousands of dragonflies and butterflies. And I just laid back in the grass and I was crazy happy. There's nothing more magnificent, in my opinion, than butterflies and dragonflies. And there were so many. Oh, I was with them. They were with me. We enjoyed the day together. What could be better, right? In the moment. Um, seven, recognize power animals. Recognize animals that speak to you on a deeper level. Animals that call you to them. Animals that you seem to emulate or you're like. I'm a bear, no question. If you got to know me, you wouldn't doubt it for a minute. What animals call you? What animals do you see over and over again? What animals do you want to hang with? Um, eight, connect with plants. Nothing more amazing than plants. They feed us. We are plants. They make our air, trees. They are visually stunning and beautiful in every way. And I could go on and on. They are living beings. Why not connect with them? Why not connect with them? So it's how to do that. Um, tend a garden. Whether you're growing your own garden, you are the earth caretaker of that garden. Learning how to grow a garden for food, for beauty, for animals, and learning how to do it in a way that you're not over controlling it. You're an earth caretaker. You're working with the earth spirits. You're tending the garden. You're not controlling the garden. That's an amazing thing to learn. 10. Create nature art. Something humans do that no other animal does the same as we do. Is we create art. We think of ideas. We move our hands. We put things together whether we paint or we build or we work with clay. You know, it, nature is the endless palette. The opportunities for creating art on the land are endless. Our ancestors did it. Labyrinths, beautiful earth circles, paintings on rock, you name it. When we do that, we connect more deeply with nature. We bring out the earth keeper in us. We give it life. Ideas come to us in deeper connection. If we can do it in a way where we let actually let nature tell us what to do and we tell it what to do. We work together in conjunction as a partnership. That's a whole nother level. I'll tell you how to do that. 11. Photograph nature. Well, I'm a nature photographer. It's one of the gloves of my life. I've been doing it since 12. It may be my most joyful thing I have in life. So, I'm going to talk about it. You know, you may not want to go out with a camera, but so many of you people today have your these crazy phones, right? And they are good. They take incredible pictures. So you don't have to become a professional. But we're going to talk about ways you can use your phones when you're out to take pictures and keep nature alive for you and to share it with others. But not become controlled by the device. It's the beauty, the art of it, is where I want to take you with that. Um, soak in the magic hours, chapter 12. The hour before the sun sets, the hour after the sun sets, the hour before the sun rises, the hour after the sun sets, the hour after the sun rises, the hours after a breaking storm, before a building storm, and moments in nature of power. Those are times when the light is beautiful, the spirits are out, the trees are alive and vibrant, the animals are busy and active where you can connect so deeply if you're open and ready to open that heart and do so. I'm going to show you how to do that. 13. Have a sit spot. Many spots or one spot in nature where you go, just you, and it's your sacred place. You know every plant and animal in that spot. You know what's going on there. And that spot becomes the place that calls to you, where you get inspiration, where you feel and confront problems you have in your life, issues that you have to work through. The trees, the plants, the animals help. 14. Honor elements as living beings. The elements. 
clouds, the moon, the sun, water, dirt, you name it, wind. They're all living beings in their own unique way. When you can learn to communicate with those things, oh, watch your life take off. Um, 15, honor trees. Honor trees. Honoring trees is, I don't know, I'll put that on the top of my list. If someone came to me today and said, Tim, you got a favorite thing in nature that you love the most and you're attracted to the most? Oh, man. I don't like to think of things like that, but of course we all have things that excite us more than others. Trees are it for me. I am a tree dude. I love trees. I like to climb them. I like to photograph them. I like to sit in them. I like to observe them. I like to just think about the fact that they're here. Big trees, little trees, all kinds, shapes and sizes. Trees to me are one of the great living gifts the earth provides to help human beings go deeper into the earth. They're a conduit. They take us deeper if we learn to communicate with them. Um, 16, gather earth medicine. Finding beautiful things in nature and building an altar. Things that inspire you, like bones. Like I have bear bones. I love, of course, because I'm a bear man. Um, beautiful plants. Today I found an incredible turkey feather. And I know that mother turkey's out there with a bunch of babies right now. It felt great. Connected me. Beautiful um, rocks are endless. You know, the shapes of rocks. I love to connect with and carry heart rocks and find them. They remind me of my heart. I could go on and on. It never ends. The shape of bark. Shape of I, the other thing I love is driftwood. I love to go to the coast of Oregon and California um, and collect driftwood beautifully. Driftwood shaped by the ocean and shaped by the river it came down. Nature's art, as I would call it. Man, what a gift that is. 17. Call to your ancestors. We just had a talk about that. Walk with them. They're out there waiting for you. Give them a call. Walk with them. Learn about them. Learn about your family history. Learn about where you grew up in the earth, where your your grandfathers and before, and the grandfathers before, and the grandmothers before, and the grandmothers before. Back hundreds, thousands of years. Where did you come from? What is your original land? Ask them to come and spend time with you. 18. Master wilderness living skills. Master wilderness living skills. Um... This is a big subject that I, I want to talk more and more about as we go down the road. Um, but it's how to live in nature without controlling nature. How to build a fire the natural way. How to build a shelter the natural way. How to stay warm the natural way. Um, how to eat wild and edible plants, what's edible. How to walk and not get hurt and explore off trail and become an animal. These are all really, really, really important things to learn. The old ways that our ancestors lived, before modern technology, before guns, before any of that stuff. Just you and the land and maybe a knife. That's about it. That's an incredible thing. And learning to do that is so empowering. It's so free. Knowing you can do that and connect it. That it can take you into your earth caretaker place in leaps and bounds leaps and bounds so think about that okay and there's schools for that our school teaches that there's schools around the country there's incredible books you can read um, I want to take a quick little break now and we'll start up again in a minute because I don't want this to be too long but I, I wanted to just say one thing and that is Just a reminder, I know times are tough now. I, I know that sometimes the easiest thing you can do is just bury your head and forget it and just keep busy doing basic daily things, which you have to do some things to live in this modern world, I understand. I mean, it's confusing when we live in a capitalistic society or another kind, you know, we have to make a living, we have to have rent an apartment or buy a house or live in a house. We have to get a car. That's a whole other thing, right? It emits pollution. Um, we have to uh, 
buy goods to live. You know, this it's we're all in it together. I, I want I want to just remember you're not alone. We're all in it together. And the more of us that wake up to what's needed and find companionship with each other, and then through that companionship find purpose to become an Earth caretaker, care for our planet, we could start to deal with all of these problems. And our Earth is a loving being. She, she will be patient with us to some degree. She will give us the time we need if we show progress, I believe. But the truth is, if we don't do this, if we just keep living like we are, not honoring these skills that I'm talking about here, not bringing them alive again, then the Earth will have no choice but to begin to eliminate human beings. It just will happen, as it has happened many times before in the history of the planet. Not with human beings, but with other beings, like dinosaurs. And that's just a reality. But the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing of it all is, unlike the dinosaurs when the comet hit the Earth and they were eliminated because life became uninhabitable, we have answers. We know how to do what is needed to make it so that humans can become Earth caretakers and live on this planet. We know what to do. And we have existing technology to help and we have the brains and the ability to create more technology. It's just what will it take to get us off our butts and do it? So think about that as you're thinking about these subjects I'm mentioning these chapters and how they're all so vitally important. And uh, I'll sign off for now, and I'll start up with Chapter 19 next and let you know what that is. Oh, thank you for listening.